good afternoon, everyone. Thank you um, very much for making it through to Friday afternoon. Um, the uh, the warriors, as it were. So um, uh, I'd just like to introduce uh, Marion Marshalek uh, for a very informative talk about the elephant in the room. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome, everyone, to my talk about the elephant in the room. Um, some of you might expect to talk about elephants, but this is actually going to be about malware. Um, I'll be speaking about some very interesting malware samples being encountered in the course of 2014, being dubbed after Babar, a famous French cartoon, being an elephant, alongside with other samples being dubbed Bunny, Casper, and Dino. My name is Marin Maschlek. I'm a threat researcher uh, focusing on malware analysis and development of threat detection technologies. I work for a California-based startup named Cyford, which do advanced threat detection. Today, we'll be speaking um, about malware, which was first mentioned in an article by French newspaper Le Mans, which mentioned in, uh, I think, March 2014, very interesting malware um, supposedly being operated by the French government, being named Babar. Back at the time, we didn't know anything about malware being named Babar. Um, we didn't even have a link to the binaries. But we went on our course to find mentioned binaries. Uh, starting with an overview of the uncovered malware families, here's the timeline. Um, the first families we found were rather dull binaries named TFC, NBOT, and GBD, and uh, some more acronyms we couldn't identify so far. Um, these binaries, though, didn't give away any link to the actor behind them or the interest of the actual operation that involved them. But they uh, showed habits similar to another piece of malware being uncovered in 2011 named Bunny. Bunny was a, um, a scripting bot which was distributed through a spear phishing campaign involving an Adobe Reader zero-day exploit. And it led us on on our search to finally find the binaries of Babar. Babar was compiled in 2010, and uh, we expect the operation involving Babar to be active from 2009 through 2010 and possibly 2011. Furthermore, though, um, we found researchers from ESET went on to find another uh, malware family which, through binary linking, could be identified as another entity in this cartoon menagerie, which was Casper. Casper has been spread in 2014, also involving uh, zero-D exploits. And furthermore, it could be linked to another malware family named Dino. As mentioned, the first malware we discovered was a plugin platform, namely TFC or NGBD, however you want to name it. And but was a denial of service bot. Bunny, as mentioned, has been spread in 2011 using a spear phishing campaign. Babar is the declared superstar in this menagerie, um, being active throughout 2009. Dino, sorry, Casper, has been thrown through a uh, watering hole campaign in Syria. And Dino, unsurprisingly, has been active in Iran. Let's have a closer look at the family. So the first binaries we uncovered were NBOT binaries. Um, rather dull denial of service bots. Um, they were rather plain. There was no runtime packer involved. They contained very telling strings, as you can see on the screenshot, telling us about their intentions. But what was surprising for us was their um, intention as denial of service bots, which is rather uncommon to have denial of service bots without any packer obfuscating their intent. So going on with our research, we found more related binaries namely the uh, TFC platform, NGBD, which are um, dedicated to download plugins, which can um, add activity to the malware being installed on the system and extend the functionality. But all these binaries together were not fundamentally interesting from a researcher point of view. However, the furthermore uncovered bunny malware um, could be linked to these binaries through similarities in, in the code. Um, showed interesting uh, behavior, uh, much more interesting than the binaries discovered before. Um, what was telling for us, though, um, was the name of the binary, which reminded us of Bugs Bunny, the cartoon. 
The name of the binary is, um, came from the embedded PDB string, which wasn't stripped from the binary, uh, showing us the name of the project, namely Bunny 2.3.2. What was Bunny? Bunny was a uh, scriptable bot incorporating a Lua engine. So Bunny would go on to download Lua scripts to uh, change its behavior to a certain extent at runtime by injecting the scripts into its own code body. How does it work? So Bunny um, is actually a pretty sophisticated bot in itself, having a main thread, which is uh, mainly busy with downloading um, Lua scripts and commands from the CNC, executing the, um, the final threads, which are dedicated to execute the Lua scripts. From there, it would uh, fill the downloaded data to uh, data files, namely three, net.cap1, 2, and 3, which would then be worked on by the dedicated worker threads by the model author called Hero threads. There was a Hero th zero, which would not uh, ex expose any interesting behavior. All three working Hero threads would be busy working on scripts downloaded through either HTTP to do direct script ex execution. Hero number two would execute cron tasks, which were sort of scheduled tasks, which uh, were dedicated to be executed by the bot at a specific point in time. And here number three would work uh, on a sort of batch file called DB file within the, uh, within the malware to um, enable the malware to execute in batch mode. All of this together um, was being locked through clear text lock messages within the bot, uh, which would be done to a dump file, which would then be exfiltrated to the CNC server. All of this together was monitored by a performance monitor thread, which would ensure that the execution load of the bot would not exceed a certain threshold at the point of operation. All right, all of this together is for us fairly interesting, as the uh, inclusion of the Lua engine enabled the bot to change its behavior to a certain extent, as the Lua engine um, provides uh, a vast set of functionality, which can then be called through a Lua script. Lua has originally been developed uh, within the computer game uh, industry to inject behavior to computer games at runtime. And the authors of the BunnyBot used this uh, functionality to extend their bot by Lua scripts. Interesting on the Bunny malware, though, was its extensive uh, evasiveness. So Bunny came with a long list of evasion techniques, which partially focused on the behavior of antivirus engines being installed on the system. Bunny would perform an interesting emulator check, which um, suggested that the authors of the malware had a certain extent of knowledge of antivirus emulators. Um, it would also check its execution environment to see if it was properly set up, and check the number of running processes on the machine to see if it was an actual real environment it was uh, executed in. Interesting also, it would perform uh, time API hook detection, which is frequently performed in sandbox solutions to um, hinder the malware in detecting the environment. Um, the most interesting trick in this list, though, for me personally, was the emulator check, which I first thought was a sandbox check. So Bunny at startup would see if the own module file name contained one of these strings listed on the screenshot, which I didn't know where they belonged to, but I supposed it were names being used within sandboxes. Turned out later, when a US-based researcher contacted me, um, that this were not sandboxes being searched for, but actual emul uh, antivirus emulators. So he pointed out that in his research, he had found out that test app was a name frequently used by the Bitdefender emulator, and that the last uh, string, which looks rather random, um, looks like something that the Kaspersky engine could produce during an execution. But what he also pointed out was that this name is indeed rather random because he sent me a list of other names that he had uh, ex extracted from the Kaspersky emulator. So after all, I could conclude that the authors of the Bunny Miller um, had good intentions in, in detecting emulators, but with this trick would not be quite successful in detecting any uh, emulator. Going on um, with the next family, which was named Babar. Uh, let's disassemble. Babar. Um, Babar <laughs> is my personal persistent elephant threat. Um, as mentioned, was first uh, published in the French newspaper Le Mans, where the authors stated that there is uh, 
documents, which had been leaked by Edward Snowden, and originated from the Canadian Security Service. These documents supposedly um, described sophisticated espionage malware being supposedly operated by the French government. But at the time, the article came out, no one had his hands on the binaries. However, through uh, extensive research, we finally figured out there are bar binaries, we analyzed them, and they're indeed uh, espionage malware, performing basic keylogging, uh, grabbing screenshots, grabbing audio captures, grabbing like, everything the malware could get its hands on on the infected machine. But bar would do so by operating a local instance on the machine, uh, which would do keylogging through a useland keylogger, would also apply a uh, user land rootkit component, which was able to steal information from remote processes running on the machine. How does this work? So, Bavar itself was also a rather quite sophisticated piece of malware, using some rather quite simple tricks to achieve its goals, but working fairly well. It was fully operated in userland, being loaded at system startup by an instance of Rekis VR32, which would be loaded through a registry key which would then inject the Babar DLL into the dedicated main instance, which is another remote process in the machine, randomly chosen from userland, which would then go on to create two more child instances, which used as a backup strategy. So the main instance would still do the uh, big part of the espionage uh, tricks, while the child instances would wait for the main instance to die to take over and create a new child instance instead. The main instance would do the main part of espionage, namely performing the user land keylogger and dumping the locked keystrokes to a file, doing the clipboard snooping and all the other espionage uh, techniques, and dumping all the spite data into log files, which would then be exfiltrated to the remote server. Furthermore, the main instance would place a global Windows hook, which enabled the malware to load its malicious code into a select a list of processes on the Windows desktop. Um, the processes of interest that Bar would perform its API hooking on were handed to the malware through a configuration file. And the API hooking would then be performed with the Windows Detours library. The API hooking would work through Terminpillin uh, functions. I'll be speaking about this more in a little bit. Babar indeed was trying to hide in plain sight as mentioned it would create its main instance. The infection of remote processes would work through uh, remote threads, which would invoke a function stop that had been copied to the remote process beforehand. And by using information being handed over through a section object, would then load the malicious DLL of Babar into the process space of the remote process and there execute a dedicated export of the binary. In most cases, this would uh, involve the infection of child instances um, being performed through one of the exports. But interestingly, this technique was also used for the CNC communication. So one dedicated export of the Babar DLL would perform the CNC communication. So for communicating to the remote server, a dedicated instance in the remote process would be created. And from there, uh, Babar would then call to its dedicated server. Interesting for me also was how simple and effective the keylogger was implemented. Um, Babar used the userland keylogger based on the raw input model, which basically means it would create an invisible uh, message-only window receiving keystrokes from the, the keyboard and simply dumping them to a text file, which is probably the most simple way of implementing a keylogger on a Windows workstation. As mentioned before, Babar came with the userland rootkit. And this means um, that API addresses in remote processes of interest would be hooked, and information at runtime would be stolen from dedicated APIs. This was performed through the Windows Detours library, which works as follows. So usually, a function call work from a source function to a target function as a usual redirection of execution with an uh, applied hook. This looks a little bit different, so the hook would place a detour function between the function call and um, uh, between the source function and the target function. The detour function would then perform the stealing of information, which would either go into the API or come out as a, as a return value from the called API, and sniff this information on the run between the source function and the target function. 
also necessary is the trampoline function to do the cleanup after the detour function and the sure um, flawless execution throughout the hook. Here's our hook, and Babar would do this for its internet communication, for its file creation, and for audio streams on the system to have a maximum impact on information going in and out of the machine. The next actor on stage is now Casper. Casper is one of the newer binaries, thankfully discovered by Sean Calvet, who uh, was willing to share this binary with me. Casper is a reconnaissance malware, namely malware, which um, is just intended to snoop on information about the infected platform and about the user uh, using the infected platform to enable the attacker to determine if this is an interesting target and potentially install a more sophisticated malware or to ignore this um, infected machine totally. Interesting part about Casper was that it had uh, a snooping model which would uh, design antivirus evasion strategies. So based on which antivirus product was installed on the system, Casper would either change its persistent method or change its process injection method to escape the dedicated antivirus product installed on the system. Casper was spooking in Syria, which was probably the most interesting part for us. It was discovered in 2014, being spread through a watering hole. The watering hole was hosted on the Syrian uh, uh, Ministry of Justice website and uh, would make use of, in total, two zero-day exploits being used to infect the dedicated target machines. The data um, being extracted by Casper involved information about the system and information about the user that was logged in and the username and about the running processes on the system and also some information from the Windows registry. The last actor I wanted to be speaking about today is Dino. Dino is another espionage toolkit or an, another espionage uh, Trojan with numerous features. Um, we found detections for it in Iran in 2013, which makes it a rather uh, recent operation. Dino in total also shows its uh, CNC commands in clear text. We could see that uh, its main intention was to do extensive espionage on the file system of the infected machine, but it would also download and execute further executables and install uh, cron tasks as Bunny did before. Not to mention that on Windows there aren't generally uh, cron tasks, but rather scheduled tasks, but the developers still used that uh, kind of term. And also, um, Dino would have a fairly interesting way of, of storing snooped information on the system. Uh, designing its own kind of file system to store its data. Altogether, um, the presented malwares are uh, not highly technically interesting, but very uh, effective because they were uncovered for uh, a long time, or they were not, not discovered for a long time. And um, certainly their sophistication was uh, enough for the purpose they were designed to do. How did we find out these binaries all linked together? That was, from a reverse engineer's point of view, fairly easy. But um, after publishing our malware, we had trouble explaining to our peers why we were so sure that um, the, the supposed actor, which is said to be the French government, would use denial of service bots, or why they would use reconnaissance malware in Syria. So we came up with a system to prove our, our binary linking, which is based on the idea that, um, of course, attributes within the binary can be faked. So attributes can be linked together on fake binaries. The question is, though, how many can be faked? And um, our, our idea was to just collect as many attributes as we could to show the overlapping ones and prove our, our conclusions without any doubt. So we collected many, many attributes from different domains to show that our binaries uh, all belonged together to the same kind of factor. Because the problem uh, that we had basically with our malware was that um, through, through the leaked document, we had one link for Babar to the alleged actor, the French government, but we didn't have a link for any of the other binaries that we analyzed. So we still needed a way to prove that all the families that we found um, 
were being written and or operated by the same actor. So we came up with a long list of attributes, which you can probably not read on this slide. But if you're interested in how um, methodology works in detail, there is two different papers, namely one, uh, the virus bulletin paper I published here, and another paper we published in Summer at Black Hat, where the entire list of attributes is outlined. Basically, we try to collect attributes from binary structures. We collect attributes from the strings being used in the binaries. Another uh, set of attributes from the infrastructure, the, the uh, CNC servers, such as location or, or domain names. And put all these attributes together to see if there's any overlaps within our extracted features. Here you can see a spreadsheet, um, highly sophisticated science, where I outlined the overlaps with color. And as you can see, there's a lot of color in the spreadsheet, which indicates the binaries have a lot of overlap. All of this together enable us to do our binary stylometry and link Babar to Bunny, from Bunny to Nbot, from Nbot to Casper to Dino, back to Nbot, which leaves us with the question, um, why would anyone care to create a denial of service bots uh, if he has such a sophisticated set of espionage tools? However, another interesting aspect of the discovered malware were the peculiarities in how the actors implemented their binaries. Namely, there were a lot of bugs within the uncovered malware, which you would not expect from a highly sophisticated actor. However, interestingly, the proxy bypass method, which was shared through a lot of different, um, a lot of different samples within the uncovered set, would care for a bypass around uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer, but would not think about any other potential browsers being used by the dedicated targets. Furthermore, Babar would be started up by an instance of Rekis VR32, which would then, as mentioned, inject Babar into its several instances, but not care about stopping the loading process after injecting the rootkit. So um, as much as I dug through the Babar uh, binary code, I couldn't find any, uh, any method to actually stop the loading process from executing. Furthermore, there was one uh, nbot dropper which would crash under certain conditions, namely if the director containing the executing dropper would not have um, uh, write permissions or access permissions for, for, for the actual uh, executing malware. So the create file uh, executed by the dropper on its own binary would cause the dropper to crash. Another um, bug, where I'm not entirely sure if it's a bug or a feature, was uh, within the bunny dropper, which would drop its payload and not invoke it, which for once has sense uh, considering sandboxes, which usually do not restart during the infection process. So the sandbox would not be able to analyze the dropped payload, which will only be started after a reboot. But also, the bunny dropper forgot to delete its own dropper within the dropper. So the drop payload uh, would eventually delete the dropper, but only after a reboot, which leaves interesting artifacts on the infected machine. So it's not entirely sure if this was intention or if it just forgot to delete their uh, dropper. However, um, so much about the binaries. Let's look at the attribution. Where, where do, does the model come from? Attribution is hard, so we can just um, conclude based on, on binary attributes on where the malware comes from. In fact, this is, uh, this is extremely hard to attribute a binary to an actor just based on the attributes within the binary. Um, in our case, likely, we had um, mentioned documents where the Canadian Intelligence Service already did very good work on the attribution. But this, in fact, is the only thing that helps us linking the binaries, indeed, to the French Intelligence Service. Attribution is hard. Many people uh, had their problems with this uh, in the past, and also some did mistakes in attributing to actually the, the wrong operator. Here's a very good example for that. This uh, excerpt is a piece of, of French newspaper talking about an Australian researcher named Brian Marshall, where I have to tell you I'm, I'm not Australian, I'm, I'm Austrian. 
However, um, as mentioned, the best attribution in this case we have is the link from Babar, which was outlined in the CSEC document, linking it to the French government, with moderate certainty. A very interesting article about the interests of the alleged operator, the French government, in the targets that have been affected was published uh, in springtime of this year by a French researcher named Mathieu Suich, who outlined the French interest in Iran, Syria, and the Middle East. What still remains unanswered, though, is why the uh, French government would try to spy on targets in Canada and potentially in Norway. That was it so far from my side. At this point, I want to say my uh, warm-hearted thank you to my co-researchers named Joan Calvet and Paul Rascanieras. Also supporting was Morgan Marquibois and, of course, Edward Snowden and the CSEC Canada by publishing their document. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. If you have more interest in the topic, here's some links for further reading. If you want to uh, analyze the binaries yourself, here is a collection of hashes. And that was it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Thank you, Marion. Does uh, anybody uh, have any questions? <laughs> I thought about it. To be honest, I thought about it. Just to, just to see what happens. Uh, any questions? If no? Okay. I don't see any, but I, it's quite bright up here, so I don't see any hands. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mario.